Hello. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a simple seismograph. So, what is a simple seismograph? Well, it's a uh, you can have a, a block um, attached to a spring that can be attached to a support that's attached to the ground. So, when the ground ground moves, the support moves, and when the support moves, you um, this it affects the uh, length of the spring which is the distance between where the block is to where the support is and in that way it affects the motion of the block okay so this is one way uh, we could find out the motion of of the earth right well um, we can uh, to set up this problem uh, we use we're going to use two um, two origins so to say um, uh, we want to have a inertial reference frame with respect to which we write the equation of motion so this is the inertial reference frame both origins are inertial reference frame uh, meaning earth will move with respect to this frame but this frame is fixed in time right this doesn't have acceleration so acceleration of this point itself is zero. Acceleration. This point itself is zero. Now, so here is a situation in which we find ourselves in an equilibrium. So right now it's sitting there. There is no motion of uh, Earth or anything. So at instant t, uh, <clears throat> this is a, a situation, and we uh, we use the block with respect to O1. And let this coordinate be y t. So, so basically, this distance right now is y t. And for the top of the spring, we use the origin here. As, and to, so this this distance here is y e. And what's given to us is y e of t is is the is the same displacement so th this is also y so this this and this are both y -E. and it's given the earth is kind of moving uh, maybe harmonically so with some amplitude constant and cosine omega t so also we'll say that this thing was resting at t equal to zero at t equal to zero maybe y this 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 y of this coordinate y zero is zero and y dot zero is zero so, so these are given so what are you supposed to find uh, to find y of t okay so uh, we don't want to find completely general so we want to make it a little bit more particular here uh, the mass of mass of the block, a spring constant, and the damping parameter, damping constant. We are uh, going to make omega naught square equals to k over m to deal with them, and gamma equals b over m, just as before. And we want to have the spring in a under damped situation, so we we will say under damped. Uh, Omega naught square uh, is greater than b over m or gamma, right? Uh, gamma over two. And so we are we're going to have a frequency which is omega one square root of omega naught square minus gamma gamma over two square uh, gamma over two square. Okay, so we, um, we we will introduce this, and you will see we're going to make use of this in just a minute. Okay, so those are the uh, parameters we want we will use. Okay, so to solve this, uh, I need to discover uh, equation of motion for the variable y. So need equation of motion of variable. Y of t. 
So we we look at uh, um, for M A for this block. So this can be M A of the block versus uh, force on the block. This net force. So we're gonna uh, you, uh, try to implement that. And so when you implement here, uh, we get M Y double dot equals to the force on this has this form y e minus e why y e minus e uh, we see that if uh, y e minus e is greater than zero then the force of the block is pointed upward which is same as positive y axis so it's going to be positive k y e minus y which is makes sense because you have this variable and this is coming with a negative sign over there as we anticipate y variable to be a restoring variable right so this is a restoring force on the y variable you want to be able to mm, check whether I mean, when these are expanded stretched then when the spring is stretched it actually applies inward force on the ends when it's compressed it applies outward force on them so you want to make sure that you you check the signs based on your uh, understanding of which way the force will be on the block uh, now why dot uh, because y is that kind of variable upwards y dot is a uh, y component and so it's pointed up and so if I just multiply it by v the uh, the dissipative force you know will be opposite right so it, 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 this 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 is the resistive force from say there was some air or something it's moving in air so b y dot okay so <clears throat> this is the equation of motion uh and let's let's now um, kind of uh, rearrange this so that uh first divide by m and then introduce omega naught square and gamma and then bring on this side I get y double dot I get gamma y dot and then I get omega naught square y so these are identical to a damped oscillator right uh, which it is so no surprise here but on the other side I get omega naught square and I get y e and y e is supposed to be this so supposed to be a e times cosine omega t okay so uh, we um, we see that this is uh, analogy to the damped driven oscillator this is damped driven oscillator so solution should be y of t should be the damped oscillator part so let's call it a1 equal minus gamma over 2t cosine omega 1t with that omega 1 plus uh, a2 uh, e to the minus gamma over 2t sine omega 1t so these are the coming from just this equal to zero part and then the uh, uh, then the long-term behavior a steady state behavior or a particular solution a particular solution will look like some kind of uh, amplitude a and then cosine uh, the driven so this this is same as driving term same as this thing same as this so a driving frequency uh, minus the phase lag from previous calculations we know what a will be a has to be equal to this divided by divided by square root of uh, I've got this frequency and this frequency so omega naught square minus omega square square plus gamma omega square makes sense right so that's that's going to be the uh, the steady state amplitude that's what's going to be resonating right 
and the delta will be arc tangent inverse of this over that gamma omega over omega naught square minus omega square so the, 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 uh, we already got that part right and these are the constant that's going to be fixed uh, based on the initial conditions so uh, let's start to fix them and I'll change pin so I can show you what the initial condition uh, so one is the position another is the velocity right so this dot so we need both of them so uh, for y zero equal to zero means i put in zero here this uh, and zero here so this gives me a one and this gives me zero and this gives me plus a cosine delta so that means a one is equals to minus a cosine delta so i got the a one to get a2, I do a y dot of t, so take a time derivative of this, and then I set t equal to zero, equal to zero. So that, this will go into, um, so let's, let's work this out fully. So minus gamma over two, and then between here to here, you're gonna get uh, a1, cosine omega 1t uh, e to the power of minus gamma over 2t uh, uh, plus uh, a2 sine omega 1t uh, and then uh, I leave the exponentials alone gamma over 2t and then I'm going to get a1 so this is going to be uh, minus omega 1 sine omega 1t and then the other one is going to be b1 uh, and a2 i'm saying a2 omega 1 cosine omega 1 t so this is like a mess coming out of these two terms and the last term is going to be plus omega actually minus omega a sine omega t minus delta and so i need to set this equal to zero and you can see i'm going to get a term from here a term from here uh, and a term from here so i'm going to get minus gamma over 2 a1 that's term from here and over here i'm going to get uh, plus a2 omega 1 and then from this term i'm going to get a minus omega a to be sine delta equal to zero it wasn't it was kind of a lot of algebra but not too painful algebra and so you can see i can get both a1 and a2 so a1 is that and these are the other constants and a2 comes from here a2 is equal to sending all this on the other side one by omega one gamma over two a1 minus omega a sine delta so this is a2 so we see that um, we are going to have uh, a trans some transient terms and some steady state terms so if i if i look at the uh, plot so if i were to plot why uh, how much this guy is going to go up and down uh, in time suppose i plot this so let's do the plot over here so y versus t so start out at zero it's so maybe so it it it, it become a steady state so this this is a steady state part and this is the transient part So from there, from the steady state part, I can actually read the frequency at which uh, uh, at which this uh, the Earth is uh, driving this uh, uh, seismic uh, seismo uh, seismometer. You know, so uh, I hope this helps. Now, if I were to do uh, a different modeling for how the damping was taking place, I might my questions may turn out differently. All right. But this is uh, 
uh, a very simple model of seismograph. Uh, I hope this helps you to understand how to build your own seismograph.